Genshin Impact is a wondrous game with an ever-growing world and stylish art design is able to capture the imagination of many players. Whether you enjoy the world, story, gameplay, one aspect that will keep players coming back to the game over and over again is the amazing characters. So I'm Dartblade with a character guide to Aloy in Genshin Impact. In this guide we will briefly cover the basic lore of the character, their moves and abilities, weapon options, stat priorities and artifact builds. Remember though that these guides are aimed at free to play and low spending players, so the guide will feature characters as if they're constellation level 0 with 4 star weaponry. Aloy is part of a crossover event with Horizon Zero Dawn, so she's not a part of the Genshin Impact world, but bringing elements of Horizon Zero Dawn over to Genshin, she becomes a very useful character in her own right. Able to perform many roles, Aloy is a cryo character who can easily fit into any team composition. She is available for a limited time, for free for anyone who has reached Venture Rank 20 or above. Just check your mailbox and Aloy will be there waiting for you. Now Aloy was an outcast from birth. She grew up in harsh mountain wilderness near a tribe that shunned her. Her foster father was an expert hunter and she was trained to hunt with cat-like grace and deadly accuracy. But the thing she wanted the most, he couldn't teach her. Most of all, she yearned to know the circumstances of her birth, who her parents were and why she was shunned by the tribe overall. Her quest for answers saw her leaving her tribe, venturing out into the world and uncovering the secrets of ancient civilizations and more. While searching for the truth, she encountered many other human tribes, both friendly and aggressive, as well as many varieties of the deadly machines that roamed the world. Eventually, she was able to uncover truths and ultimately save her world from annihilation. She thought that her journey would end there, but there's always more to an adventurer's tale. She has now come to the Vat in search of new challenges in this brave new world to which she's ready to hunt again. But with that, let's move on to the moves and abilities that Aloy has available to her in Genshin Impact. First of all, for her combat talents, she has three of them. First is the normal attack rapid fire. This could be performed in various ways. First of all, you can simply press the attack button to perform up to four consecutive shots with your bow. You can also charge this up if you so wish by holding down the aim button or holding down the attack button, which will allow Aloy to charge up the shot, imbuing the arrow with cryo damage. And then finally for her normal attack, she also has a plunging attack, which is done by simply pressing the attack button when you're airborne. This will cause Aloy to plunge to the ground, damaging anyone around the impact point. But what are her other combat talents? Well, her elemental skill is known as Frozen Wilds, which is an interesting yet a little bit of a complex skill. Basically, Aloy throws a freezing bomb, this will explode on impact, and deal cryo damage in a wide AoE. But there is more to it than just a simple bomb. After it explodes, the bomb will split up into many chill water bomblets, like a cluster bomb. These will hang around on the floor and explode on contact when an enemy walks into them. These bomblets will also deal cryo damage to opponents. Alternatively, they will also explode after a short delay as well, so they do not remain on the battlefield indefinitely. But there's even more to this skill. Enemies who are hit by the freeze bomb or the chill water bomblets, the clusters, will have their attack decreased reducing their damage against you and your party. So it's a great way to debuff enemies and reduce their overall damage. On top of that, each time a bomblet or the freeze bomb hits an opponent, Aloy will gain a coil stack. This is indicated by the number appearing on Aloy's body in game. These coil stacks will actually buff up Aloy. With each stack, Aloy's normal attack damage will be increased. And should she get enough stacks, namely when she gets four stacks, the coil stacks will be cleared and she'll enter a new state called Russian Ice State. This will further increase the damage dealt by her normal attacks and converts all her normal attacks into cryo damage attacks as well. Whilst in Russian Ice State, Aloy cannot obtain new coil stacks and the coil effects will be cleared after 30 seconds or after Aloy leaves the field. So as you can see, it is quite a complex talent, having multiple uses. It can not only damage opponents, but it can debuff them as well as buff up Aloy. The only downside to it is unfortunately it's on a little bit of a long cooldown and the bomblets can be difficult to set off. Enemies don't always naturally walk into them, which means that getting the coil stacks and entering the rushed ice state, so your beefed up cryo mode, is not always guaranteed. You can slightly control the bomblets if you were using animo characters, or alternatively you can kind of sometimes push the bomblets into opponents, but it can be difficult. Which brings us on to her third combat talent, which is her elemental burst known as Prophecies of Dawn. 
This is quite a simple move, but it is very strong. Basically, when activated, Aloy will throw a power cell filled with cryo in the target's direction, which she'll then detonate by firing an arrow at it, dealing massive AoE cryo damage. This is quite a straightforward damage dealing ability, but on top of dealing nice damage to opponents, it's also a low cost elemental burst, meaning that it's quite easy to activate. But that's about it for the combat talents, let's move on to the passive talents. First of all is Combat Override. This is a talent that once unlocked, when Aloy receives a coil effect from the Frozen Wilds, her attack is increased by 16%, whilst nearby party members' attack is also increased by 8%. This effect will last for 10 seconds. So not only can she buff herself up with the coils, she can also help her allies out in her team, making her even more of a useful team player. On top of that, we have Strong Strike, which is another passive talent that when Aloy is in the Russian Ice State, so when she's in her beefed up cryo mode that she gains from the coils from the frozen wilds bomb, her cryo damage bonus is increased by 3.5% every one second. The maximum amount of bonus cryo damage you can get is 35% via this method. So she has two passives to help whatever style play you like to use Aloy for. Strong Strike if you like to use her as more of a main DPS and Combat Override if you like to use her more of a support. But she has one more passive talent, which is easy does it. Basically, when Aloy is in the party, animals who produce fowl, raw meat or chilled meat will not be startled when a party member approaches them. This is great for when it comes to hunting game in Genshin Impact. But unfortunately, after you actually attack a boar, bird, whatever, the others in the nearby area will be startled, unfortunately, despite this passive talent. So those are all the abilities and talents available to Aloy in Genshin Impact. But every character in the game can be built to fulfill various roles. With Aloy, there are three builds that I like to use for her. The first build I mainly use for her is the Sub Burst DPS build. This is a pseudo damage support build that focuses mostly on Aloy's burst and assist in dealing damage to opponents. So for this build, when it comes to the weaponry, I'd recommend going for either the Stringless if you're able to get it. If not, then I would recommend Rust. And then if not that, maybe even the Sacrificial Bow. As for the truly free to play options, I'd recommend the Hamayumi Prototype Crescent or if you want a freestyle weapon, then go for the slingshot. All of these come with either elemental mastery, attack percentage increase, or energy recharge, but it's the bonuses that they provide that we're mainly looking at for this build. Stringless being the optimal bow here, which increases not only our elemental skill, but more importantly, our elemental burst damage. Now, when it comes to the artifacts for this sub burst DPS build, I'd recommend going for two pieces of the Blizzard Stryer set, as well as two pieces of the Noblesse Oblige. The two-piece Blizzard Stryer set will give us 15% increased cryo damage, which to be honest, the majority of Aloy's attacks will be cryo damage attacks, and the two-piece Noblesse set will increase our burst damage by 20%. But as for the stats on them, for your Sands, I'd recommend going for either attack percentage, elemental mastery, or energy recharge. For your Goblet, of course, go for cryo damage, and then for your Circlet, go for crit rate or crit damage. As for the substats on all of your artifacts, you'll want to focus on crit rate, crit damage, attack percentage, elemental mastery, or energy recharge. When it comes to your talent priorities, focus mainly on the Prophecies of Dawn, so your elemental burst, then the Frozen Wilds elemental skill, and then your normal attack. This is because we'll only really be switching over to Aloy with this build to perform her elemental skill and more importantly her elemental burst rather than actually performing normal attacks. With this build you're able to deal massive amounts of burst damage with your ultimate allowing for some very high numbers with Aloy. But that brings us on to our second build which is the Russian Ice State main DPS build. This build is all about using that unique Russian Ice State, the buffed up cryo mode that Aloy can go into to deal damage to opponents. So for this build, when it comes to the weaponry, I'd strongly recommend going for Rust as your main weapon, which will increase her normal attack damage, but reduce her charged attacks. But we're not going to be performing charged shots with Aloy in this build. Alternatively, you could use the Predator Bow, which is the Aloy event bow that comes free with this character. It has attack percentage on it and also dealing cryo damage to opponents, increasing the character's normal and charged attack damage by 10% for 6 seconds. But unfortunately, this effect only applies to PlayStation or alternatively, I'd recommend even the Hama Yumi or the Prototype Crescent. If you're really on a budget again, go with the Slingshot. As for your artifacts, you want to go again with the two-piece Blizzard Stryer set, increasing our cryo damage by 15%, and also go for the two-piece Gladiator set, which increases our attack by 18%. On these specific artifacts, when it comes to the Sands, you want to go for attack percentage. With your Goblet, you want to go for cryo damage again, and with your Circlet, you want to go for crit damage or crit rate. 
when it comes to the substats on your artifacts, you'll want to go for attack percentage, crit damage, and crit boost most of all. As for the talents, you'll want to focus on normal attack rapid fire first, and then the other two are Dan's personal preference. Like I said, this build is all about powering up Aloy, going into that Russian ice state, and then just unleashing waves of arrows on opponents. Unfortunately, there is a little bit of downtime with this build due to the Frozen Wilds elemental skill as well as the Russian ice state. So there'll be times where Aloy is off the field. But if you're looking for her to be a main DPS, this is probably one you should consider. Which brings us on to the third and final build, which is the support Aloy build. This is a build all about supporting a team. Using our elemental skill and elemental burst, Combined with the Noblesse four set bonus, this is one of the best builds you can have if you want Aloy as a support character. So when it comes to the weaponry, again I'd recommend going for the Stringless. Alternatives would be the Sacrificial Bow, or if you're on a budget then go for the Slingshot. As for your artifacts, you'll want four pieces of the Noblesse Oblige set. On your Sands, you want to go for either Attack Percentage or Energy Recharge. On your Goblet, again go for Cryo Damage, and then on your Circlet, I'd recommend going crit damage or crit rate, but you can also go energy recharge or attack percentage as well. As for the substats on your artifacts, focus on attack percentage, crit damage, crit rate or energy recharge. When it comes to the talent priorities, I'd recommend focusing mainly on your elemental skill and elemental burst and your normal attacks last. Now with this build, it's all about debuffing opponents and buffing up your allies. Using your elemental skill, you're able to throw a bomb at opponents, reducing their overall attack. You're also able to increase Aloy's damage as well via this method, but we're not really focusing on that too much. In fact, we're focusing more on the combat override passive talent that increases our party member's attack by 8% when Aloy receives a coil from her elemental skill. And this combined with her ultimate ability, which is on a quick cooldown and the Noblesse Oblige 4 set bonus, which increases all party members attack by 20% for 12 seconds after using an elemental burst, it means that Aloy is able to buff up a team quite often. She's also able to debuff opponents and provide a decent steady source of cryo damage as well. Now before we move away from the builds, just one last quick note. If you're leveling up Aloy at the moment or you haven't got really through to endgame yet and you want some artifact suggestions, I recommend using two pieces of the Exile artifact set combined with two pieces of the Berserker set, which gives us some increased energy recharge and increased critical rate. These are some nice buffs as you're leveling up. But every character in Genshin Impact comes with pros and cons and Aloy is no different. When it comes to her pros, the biggest pro is she's a jack of all trades. She's able to perform multiple roles, whether it be a main DPS, sub DPS, support, she can do it all. Given the right artifacts and right weaponry, she can easily fit into any team. The next pro is her elemental skill, which deals a decent amount of cryo damage to opponents. It can debuff opponents too, as well as buff up Aloy and even buff up our team, thanks to the combat override talent. And the final pro for Aloy is her elemental burst, Prophecies of Dawn, is on a very quick cooldown, meaning that she can use her ultimate ability quite often. But unfortunately there are cons. The biggest cons for Aloy are unfortunately her bomblets, which are the clusters formed after you throw the frozen wilds bomb, so your elemental skill, can be tricky to activate at times. Like I said, this can be alleviated slightly by using animo characters to blow the bombs into opponents, but still nonetheless is a con for the build overall. And the other con for Aloy is unfortunately her elemental skill, and thus how quickly she can go in and out of the Russian ice state, so her cryo buffed up mode is quite long. There is a little bit of downtime between when your Russian ice state ends and when you can go into it again. So again, that is also something to be aware of and something I would consider a con. But when it comes to Aloy, in my personal opinions, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Even though her Russian ice state does have some cons about it, it is nonetheless a fun way to play Aloy if you want to use her as a main damage dealer. Like I said in the pros, she can pretty much do it all. But she can be enhanced when it comes to the team composition that you use with her. If you're using the subburst DPS build, I'd strongly recommend taking into combat a pyro character to assist you in order to take advantage of that elemental mastery found on some of our weaponry and our artifacts and ultimately increase the damage numbers of our elemental burst thanks to the melt elemental reaction. When it comes to the Russian ice main DPS build, I'd strongly recommend using hydro characters so you're able to form freeze compositions, leaving opponents vulnerable to your assault and finally, when it comes to the support Aloy build, you can pretty much go with anything you wish. Like I said, Hydro characters or Pyro characters are probably my personal choice. But on top of that, having a second Cryo character in your team can also help when it comes to the Elemental Resonance. 
allowing you to recharge your elemental burst more quickly and provide you some extra base crit rate. But there we have it, that is Aloy in Genshin Impact. Definitely a great addition to the game, she fits in quite well, she's also very useful. Whilst yes, she is a jack of all trades, she could be considered a master of none as there are characters who could potentially perform the various roles better. But the fact that she can switch between so many roles is definitely a big bonus for Aloy. For me personally, I love that her elemental skill debuffs opponents and can buff our teams up, and on top of that her burst, having such little energy cost, is a highlight for me. So there we have it, that is my character guide and overview of Aloy and Genshin Impact. Now remember there are multiple ways to play and use characters in the game, which is one of the many aspects that makes Genshin Impact so enjoyable. So at the end of the day, use the characters how you want to use them. These builds are just how I personally like to use the characters, and I hope they help you out in your adventures. So until next time, I've been Dartblade, bringing you a character guide to Aloy and Genshin Impact. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.